Good morning. And to each of you, a very good morning. And welcome to the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Marietta, Georgia. And believe it or not, our second live audience service. My name is Michael Myers, and I'm the leader of the Building IT Committee and a member of the Worship Committee. For those of you who have never been with us before or are, you know, come back, I don't know how you'd come back because you would probably have not know very well that we're actually doing audience services, but, you know, welcome here. I hope our service uh, nurtures you and makes you feel good and you enjoy it. As a Unitarian congregation, we welcome a variety of theological and spiritual beliefs. We honor the inherent worth and dignity of everyone. Everyone is welcome here. If you'd like to be on our mailing list to receive the Emerson Notebook and information about our upcoming activities, please go to the website at emersonuu.org to subscribe. That is spelled E-M-E-R-S-O-N-U-U dot org. Our speaker today is Selena Two Bears, Tal Inini Yu Ya Ona. Close, but I didn't quite get it. Practice that all night, still got it wrong. Who is also referred to as Mama Bear by those who are familiar with to her is an indigenous leader and spiritual teacher. Her grandmother began teaching Selena indigenous ways as a youth. As an adult, she walked the 13 shamic altars with Mayan elders of Guatemala. She was passed the bucket by Brother Bear, who was passed the bu bucket by Nelson Turnell to perform slot, sweat lodge ceremonies. She was given the star altar by Lakota Elder Chief Golden Light Eagle to perform, here we go again, Hambalotic Hamlichik writes and participate in the Sundance ceremony. Following our service today, you are invited to attend our coffee hour, which I believe is going to be in the back, since we can't do it here in the building. Uh, and there will be second hour activities at uh, 11.15, again in the back by the picnic tables. Uh, that's about where it's going to be. Uh, and those are listed in the order of service, which nobody has here, but <laughs> uh, is on your order of service on the online. I'm not too sure how that's going to work. <laughs> no one can come here from online. Uh, and since we haven't done this in a little while, I'll give you about 15 seconds to essentially meet and greet each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is always one of their favorite things to do. We haven't done this in a year. <laughs> okay. They need more time. Yeah. <laughs> that normally takes a whole minute. <laughs> Our try this lighting words for this morning are from Ella Wheeler Wilcox. So many gods, so many creeds, so many paths that wind and wind, while just the art of being kind is all the sad world needs. And this is Talon, also known as Spirit Warrior. He's a firekeeper with the tribe. <laughs> As our service begins, please take a moment to greet those around you and with our congregational affirmation. We need not think alike to love alike. In the spirit of beloved community, welcome to Emerson. Our opening words this morning are closer to the heart by Rush. And the men who hold high places must be the one who start to mold a new reality closer to the heart. 
blacksmith and the artist reflect it in their art. They forge their creativity closer to the heart. Philosophers and plowmen each must know their part to sow a new mentality closer to the heart. Aho. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Ginger White. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ginger White, and I serve as a member of the Emerson Pastoral Care Team and currently as the president of our Board of Trustees. The pastoral care uh, team members are available as listening ears and caring hearts to support you during challenging times. You can contact us at our email address, pastoralcare at emersonuu.org. At this time in our service, we pause to share personal joys, sorrows, and concerns of our Emerson community. Each Sunday, we light, light our vigil bowl. Its light represents the light of hope for the peaceful resolution of all conflicts on our planet. And it honors all dedicated people who serve us, including those on the front lines of the COVID-19 virus battle. Today, we particularly think of those in uh, Israel and, and Palestine. We also light a special candle of acknowledgement for the Cherokee and Muskegee nations of people who lived on this land before us. May this candle remind us of our interconnection and may our actions help heal all nations of people. And Michael will light our candles today as I share these joys, sorrows, and concerns with you. If you are with us virtually, Please feel free to type your joy, sorrow, or concern in the chat. These are the joys and sorrows that have been shared with us this week. Jennifer uh, Kuntz has been with her father the last two weeks, helping him in his transition, which happened this, this last week uh, out in... Um, I know it's out west. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I don't remember if it's Arizona... Nevada. But anyway, keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And we have two joys today. Uh-oh, I'm feeling myself choke up. <laughs> and they are both new lives coming into the world. This is from Susan and Joe Tomachek, a grandniece, Franny Seagrave, uh, joined us on May 1st, entered the world uh, loved by our family and many friends. Now see, this is where I'm feeling my choke up. My son and daughter-in-law are in the uh, delivery room as we speak. <laughs> Let's see, was there anything else? Oh, see, I got so excited. Oh. Let us all send our heartfelt caring intentions to all people everywhere by offering the Buddhist prayer of loving kindness. The words are uh, projected on your screen at home um, and printed in the order of service, which we don't have. But hopefully by now you maybe know them or else feel them in your heart. May all beings be filled with loving kindness. May they be free from harm and suffering. May they be well in body, heart, and mind. May they be at peace. Blessed be. We're doing a story for all ages. Hi, guys. All 
storytelling is very important to a lot of ancient cultures, and I have a story for you today. This is called Forgets to Twinkle. Many, many long moons ago, the firefly was known by another name. He was a star, and his name was Forgets to Twinkle. This little brother was part of the great star nation and lived with his seven sister stars, who were still shining brightly there in the sky. The seven sister stars held the seven sacred directions of east, south, west, north, above, below, and within, teaching all of us in the human tribe to honor the abundance that the great buffalo brings to us from every direction. Forgets to Twinkle was always sad because his sisters had the missions of holding the seven sacred directions for the great buffalo and he wasn't sure what his mission was. He was so very sad that sometimes he let his light fade away, and that is how he earned his name, Forgets to Twinkle. One sleep, when Grandmother Moon was showing her full face, Forgets to Twinkle asked her for permission to leave the Sky Nation and go nearer to the Earth Mother to discover more about his purpose in life. Grandmother Moon said Forgets to Twinkle could go, but that he should be careful not to go too close to the Earth. The Earth Mother's magnetism could hold him and keep him from coming home. Forgets to Twinkle agreed that he would pay attention and only travel where it was safe. On the first sleep, Forgets to Twinkle traveled through the Sky Nation until he was hanging in the clouds above the sacred mountain. His heart was very happy because he could see all of the little brothers and sisters of the creature tribe playing in the moonlight. He shouted down to Brother Coyote and asked if he could join in the play. Coyote was known by all of the other animals as the trickster. But Little Forgets to Twinkle did not know anything about the children of Earth because he had never been anywhere but the Sky Nation. Trickster Coyote shouted back that he would be delighted if Little Brother wanted to play with him. But Coyote thought Forgets to Twinkle was too far away. Forgets to Twinkle thought a moment and then decided to come closer, dancing in the sky while Coyote danced with him on Earth. Coyote started talking to the Little Star Brother very softly, making Forgets to Twinkle come closer to hear what the Trickster was saying. Softer and softer words of friendship brought Little Star out of the sky until he was floating just over Coyote's head. Then that mean old trickster grabbed Forgets to Twinkle and gobbled him up. Well, I suppose that all of you know how terrified Forgets to Twinkle was when he found himself inside the trickster's belly. He was so upset he forgot to twinkle and did not know how in the world he was going to get out safely. Around the same moment that Coyote gobbled up little star brother, Grandmother Moon looked down and noticed that Forgets to Twinkle was nowhere in sight. She looked and looked, but could not see her little star brother anywhere. Because she was concerned, she sent the stars with tails, who were her scouts, out to look for her little brother. In those ancient times, the comet people were messengers who could come and go from the great star nation. These stars with tails searched high and low for little brother without any luck in finding him. Inside the trickster's belly, the little star brother was frightened, but he knew that he had better start remembering all the wisdom his seven sisters had taught him or he would never see them again. After a long while, he finally remembered why he was called Forgets to Twinkle. He had always been afraid that his light was not as pretty as his sister's, so he would only blink a little here and there. Now that he was trapped inside Coyote's belly, he decided he'd better trust in his ability to shine brightly. He huffed and puffed and sent all of his light into his little star body, lighting himself and shining as brightly as he could. The trickster suddenly found that the trick was on him when his whole furry body lit up like grandfather's son. 
Coyote ran and ran, trying to hide from the comet scouts that Grandmother Moon had sent to find Little Brother. The trickster had seen the stars with tails circling the prairies, looking for forgets to twinkle. Old Coyote had thought he could trick the star scouts as easily as he had tricked Little Brother. Now the slippery trickster, who was so bright that there was no place he could run or hide without the star scouts finding him. In a panic, the trickster opened his mouth and spit Little Star Brother out and then ran away. The stars with tails spread the news to the cloud people who told the thunderers, who told the fire sticks, that the mean old trickster needed a taste of his own medicine. The Sky Nation was filled with Little Star's angry relatives who gathered the storms, filling the cloud people with raindrop people and ice beings who could wet and punch Coyote with their water and ice bodies. Hino, the Thunder Chief, belched his rolling roar and the Thunderbird flapped his giant wings, bringing such enormous sounds that the trickster stood quaking with fear. Meanwhile, Little Star Brother was trapped in the Earth Mother's magnetism. He could not move from the ground and go home. He was still shining brightly so his sky relations could see where he was, but no one could rescue him because they would be caught in the planetary mother's magnetism as well. He called out to the Earth Mother and asked her to release him and waited for her reply. The storm was moving across the land, giving the trickster a tra chance to run as he finally found his paws and started to dodge the pellets of ice and freezing rain. Lightning bolts crashed around him and one fire stick hit him, finally catching his tail on fire. Coyote ran and ran, trying to think of how he could trick the sky relations into leaving him alone. Little brother finally heard the Earth Mother speak amid the sound of the thunderers, her voice traveling on the raging winds that accompanied the storm his relations had made. Children of Earth now, oh sorry, for gets to twinkle, you are going to have to live with the Earth children now. If I release my magnetism, you will be able to go home, but all of my children will fall off the Earth and go flying into the sky. You are responsible for forgetting to pay attention to grandmother's advice and warning. There is no way I can help you without hurting my other children. You must stay here with us and decide what kind of creature you would like to become. Forgets to twinkle was sad, but he knew that the Earth Mother was right. He had not paid attention and had not had been tricked into ignoring Grandmother Moon's warning. He wanted to be part of the Sky Nation and to see the world from above as he had always done when he lived with his seven sisters. He knew that he would never again forget to shine his light brightly because he wanted his Sky relatives to know where he was and that he remembered his family. He decided to tell Earth Mother that he wanted to be a flying creature who could shine like a star. The Earth Mother agreed and changed him into a flying, creepy crawler of the insect tribe. She put a tiny star on his tail so that he could twinkle at his sky, rel sky relations, reminding all other little brothers and sisters in the great star nation what could happen to them if they did not pay attention to the wisdom of their elders. Even now, if Coyote hears thunder or sees a firefly, he will run away in fear. The trickster remembers that the fire sticks caught his tail on fire and that he had to jump into a pond to put it out. Some people say that the fire sticks and thunder beings counted coup on Coyote, bringing victor, victory to, in honor to little star brother. That is how Forgets to Twinkle earned the name Lightning Bug. His firefly tail lights up to remind Cody, Coyote, of the only relations that ever outtricked the trickster by catching his tail on fire. When firefly's tail lights up, we two leggeds are reminded to let out our medicine and let our medicine shine and to keep a twinkle in our eyes so the trickster cannot fool us into following the crooked trail. Now we'll sing our song of dedication. Mom is a
everyone will take a moment and close your eyes. And just breathe as if you're breathing into your heart. We're going to do a little centering meditation. So with the eyes closed and the awareness at the heart space, place the left hand over your heart and then place the right hand. As you breathe, breathe into the heart deep and long. And when you're full of breath and you can accept no more, hold for just a few moments. And then exhale again through your nose exhaling out of the heart any pain or sorrow just centering yourself in your heart when you're completely empty hold for just a few moments and then breathe into the heart again continue following your breath into your heart allowing your heart to open with a heart opening prayer Yom Mashiach, Hey Mishishi, Yom Mashiach, Hey Mishishi, Yom Mashiach, Hey Mishishi. Mother Earth, Unchimaka, beneath your feet, 
and Father Sky and Grandmother Moon above you. May you always walk in peace. Aho three different verses and it gets a little faster it's like row 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 your boat so just to let you know I'm, I'm not singing over you you just continue going but it does get faster um, by the time we're at the first fourth and final verse it's a little bit quicker and I'm singing at the same time you're singing but I'm singing the next verse Aho, Our next prayer 
as a prayer to the buffalo. So if you know the, the song, the prayer, in my culture we were taught that when we sing, we pray twice. So we're calling out to the buffalo, and this says they come in dancing for us, that they're dancing and they're coming in for us, and they carry wisdom, and they also help to remind us that we have all that we need when we need it. A whole That was from the Lakota Sioux, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota Nation. And this next is the thank you song. So I just want you, when we're praying this song, if you can think about all the things you have to give thanks for, your life and your breath and your family, your children, your homes, your jobs, but more importantly, your relationships. With Nchimaka, with the great mystery, with one another with all your relatives on this planet. Four-legged, creepy crawlies, the water people, the standing ones that breathe for us, the flying ones that sing us awake. All of the cosmos gives thanks for our relationship with all of it. It's a cycle and it's beautiful. Aho, Matakoyas.
Uh, oh, before we end and move into the next um, many paths, one destination, we're mostly filled with water. Many Wachoni, the waters of life. And waters are sacred. The sacred waters that run in you and the sacred waters that run inside our Mother Earth. And so I'd like to just offer the water healing song. Just take a moment. Our most precious thing that we have is our own sweat and our own blood. And it runs mostly with water. This is... My grandmother taught me that when we sing to the waters, that they return to purity, that they remember all things. And so the same thing runs true when you hear this song as well. This prayer is for each one of you. Wash day. Say good morning. My name is Utoncha Chikala. Um, that was the newest name that I just received at our last Temblecha. And so I want to say it's a great honor to be here today. And my heart, I hope, you can feel a heartfelt hug for me. You know, there are so many paths up the same mountain leading to the same destination. And so we call the source great mystery, right? We call it the great mystery because it's in everything. Every blade of grass, every tree, you, me, all of our children, and our waters. And so we call this great mystery because we know that this is so expansive that we cannot even begin to place any kind of definition on this. And so you may call this God or Christ or Mary or Shiva or Kali or Yahshua or Yahweh. So many different paths, so many different languages or expressions of what source is. And so I'd like today, 
I love Emerson so much because it is all paths, all walks, all nations, all beliefs. And if you look up here, this representation of this tribe, it's all walks, all paths, all people, all beliefs. For there is a great prophecy that's spoken about. And that prophecy says that one day, the time will come when the white people, the black people, the yellow people, and the red people, they all gather together. And like a whirling rainbow, they go throughout the world and restore peace and harmony. And so there can be no separation for this to come true. There can only be unity because it has to be all of us. It can't be just one, one culture, one belief, one people. One of the ways that in my culture, one of the greatest honors that I was taught was Sundance. And Sundance is once a year, and it is one of the most sacred ceremonies that the American Indian people participate in. Now, I'm trying to be politically correct, and it's very interesting in these days, politically correct. So I promise anything that I say is not meant to ever divide, but only bring unity. So when I say all peoples, all walks, all beliefs, it is to bring us into a place to remember that we are one another, that that great mystery, that source is in you, it's in me. And so in order for me to see it, I must not see division or separation. So now we were called Native Americans, right? And now it's American Indian. So some of the culture still believes very strongly that Native Americans means we were native to the Americas, right? An American Indian is more after the fact of when the Europeans came, right? And so, but you'll find different beliefs, again, even in my own culture. Every nation is different. Even every family has certain teachings that are passed along to their children and their children and their children. And so Sundance, when I was taught about Sundance, my grandmother said that it was a way that we did our greatest give away. And we gave away food and we gave away water. And for four days and four nights, we would dance, as you've seen up here, the beat of the heart of the mother, right? The heartbeat that brings life. And the tree that is in the center, we, we tie prayer ties and prayer flags on this tree of all colors, representing all the directions, the east, the south, the west, the north, above and below, and the center of our hearts. And so we carry these prayers. The sun dancers collect prayers to go to the tree. And last year when we were at the tree, somebody brought their mother, and they had to carry their mother to the tree. And the sun dancers were praying and asking for the great mystery to heal her. She had stage four, and they only expected her to live two more weeks. Her name is Sarah, and she is still alive with us and well and walking. Her sons no longer have to carry her places. And that just reminds us that the tree reminds us that if we're open to the cosmos, whatever we call this, and we're rooted to the planet where our skin, our flesh comes from, that we can be what's called the hollow bone. And that means the hollow bones for spirit to flow through, for creator to flow through, for the healing to take place. And so we dance for four days and nights, no food and no water. These take place all over. The, where I dance and where these dancers dance are out in South Dakota. And we dance at the Yankton Sioux Reservation. And we dance for all peoples, all walks, all beliefs. And we, we keep our eyes looking up to the heavens, to the sun, to remind us that inside of us that light exists. And that if we can lay down our ego, that we can be the vessel, that healing for all can take place. My grandmother taught me that, that when we give of our flesh, so our greatest 
thing to give is our life. And when we give away and we suffer, just a little suffering gets the creator's attention like that. Right? The great mystery. Because the children are willingly giving away. The, the men, they will pierce in the chest or in the back with bone or choke cherry. The women are given a choice if they wish to pierce or not. At the Sundance that I dance at, the women don't typically pierce. At the Sundance I danced at before, the women pierced. And we would pierce through our shoulders. And we would have that umbilical cord, just like a child to the mother. And that umbilical cord would be connected to that tree that's wide open to the cosmos. And we would dance with the rope tied around the piercings until we broke and we would break free. And when we broke, that would say that all the prayers that we've been laying down, that the creator has heard and will bring to us. And so my grandmother said, this also represents Christ and how Christ gave blood, his own blood, right? And it's just a small mini representation of Christ because we're just giving a little, just a little to ask, to let creator know that we're here and we're open and we are asking with everything that we are and everything that we have, that we're asking to be used in the best way. On the third day, there's a healing for all the people that come to Sundance. And they come into the arbor and they are healed with all of the fans of the Sundancers that have been in meditation, been in prayer for three full days. No food, no water. And this again is representing how all the different, whether you talk about Buddha who left his family, right? Or you talk about Christ and his suffrage. Or you talk about the many saints and their suffrage. It's just a tiny bit of our giveaway. And it creates our whole year. So you could also look at it like a new year. In our community, we call it the new year. And we go to create the year, not just for ourselves and our family. We go there to create the year for the entire planet. We pray for the waters, for they are our medicine. If you don't believe me, don't drink for four days. Then just take one tiny sip of water. You will feel how your veins and your vessels immediately come alive. It's medicine for us. We need it every day. We pray for the soil, for Unchi Maka, because her flesh is your flesh. Your bone, your flesh comes from her. So we pray for her. We pray for all the peoples, all the relatives, and not just the peoples that are on two legs. There are many beings that are our relatives. And at one time, we lived in harmony with them all. We were not afraid of the wolves, for they were just like our dogs. We were not afraid of the bears, for they did not bother us, and we did not bother them. We began to learn how to live in harmony. And when, when the, the difference between some of our thought processes is because the mental processes are not a process that naturally flows from the heaven and from the earth. You have something other than your mentality. You have your consciousness. And it's ever evolving. And so the Sundance can also represent the evolving of your consciousness, spiritual evolution. It can, it can represent for people not just creating the new year of peace and harmony. And every time we go, we go with, with a, a big prayer. So last year, my prayer was for the children because they're our future and they're our leaders. And right now, there's a lot going on with our children. And so you come and you ask for a large prayer, but you're praying for four days and you cannot repeat one prayer. So please, if you have prayers, let gentle reign. She's a part of your congregation. She's dancing this year. It's her first year. 
She needs all the prayers so that she never repeats a prayer more than once because if we repeat it more than once, what we are saying is, I don't trust you, great mystery. I think I'm going to make this happen because I'm going to have to keep reminding myself, right? If we pray it and we let it go and we trust, we have faith, the creator will answer always. And so the Sundance is very, very, very sacred, and it takes a lot of preparation, and it takes a lot to get out there. So our dancers are preparing themselves all year. It doesn't happen just before, because you have to always prepare mentally, physically. It's taxing on the body, spiritually, and emotionally, because you'll be challenged. So when the mind grabs a hold of you, our chief will walk by and say, pray harder. Pray harder. And it helps us to keep that connection to remind us that we are truly all one people. We're truly all one being with the planet and all that exists in it. So part of Sundance is the sweat lodge. And the sweat lodge purifies the body, but it also purifies the mind and the emotions. There have been many, 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 many studies done with vet, vets that suffer from PTSD. And so the Sweat Lodge was our first hospital and our first church. If we were sick, we would go into the Sweat Lodge. And the water pour, the medicine person, would pour and put herbs on the stones and pray. And everybody in the lodge would be praying. All day we pray. We take a full day to pray and sweat. Now at Sundance, we sweat in the morning and we sweat in the evening. But between rounds of praying and dancing, we come out and we sweat. Now you think, wait a minute, they're not drinking any water and they're sweating. Yes, again, it's our giveaway. Our sweat is sacred. It's just like blood. And so we drop it onto the earth, reminding that we're crying out to create our year. And so you, you could say Happy New Year, or you could say Sundance represents that. You could say Christ who died for us, and yet the Sundancers are remembering to give just a little bit of their blood to ask for all the harmony and the peace to come back to this planet. It, our Sundancers don't... Um, they don't make eye contact with anybody during their dance because their eyes are to be set on the sun to the creator. Our eyes are always to be upwards, reminding us that right now to forget about our flesh, to let our flesh have its own desires, but, but to leave them behind. This way we become more pure and every time we sweat we become more pure, more pure until soon there's no anger or rage, there's no sadness or sorrow. The only thing that there is, is bliss. There is you are with the mother, the father, Mary, Christ, whatever you call this. So the tree represents the mother, that's the way my grandmother taught me. The tree represents the mother that has the ambiblical cord and represents all the mothers and the grandmothers for they are life bringers. They give their blood willingly to bring life, right? So it's like crushing 37 bones, they say, when you give birth, all at the same time. The studies have shown that that tree represents that our mothers are strong and that when there's a balance between Masculine and feminine, there's no competition. There's simply cooperation. And that doesn't mean the masculine body and the feminine body. That means, and my grandmother taught me there are 16 different sexes, everything from extremely, extremely female to extremely, extremely male. And in between, there's a combination of those. So when I talk about masculine and feminine, I'm not talking about the physical body. I'm talking about the energy that is within you. Is it more feminine? And our women have, my grandmother said our women have forgotten that we forgot how to be sacred. And that when we remember that we are sacred, that our men will remember they are sacred. That the women are the guiders 
and that the men, they protect their, their treasures are their women and their children because without the women, the children can't come. And those little beings that come from heaven or wherever you think, we call it the star nation. The children come. We look to them for guidance. We listen to them for they teach us. And so at Sundance, you'll see a lot of little children running around, just allowing them to be. And we listen to their conversations because they teach us. We just are meant to guide them. And they teach us what they still know before they come down here and they forget. So you ever look at a baby and a baby's looking at you and they're cooing and they're smiling, but they're looking all around you. We say they just came from the stars and they still have their connection to the heavens so they see all of the beings, all of the ancestors. Some people will call the ancestors angels. Again, different verbiage. Is it just possible we're all saying the same thing? Maybe using different languaging to express it. Maybe using our own expression to express it. Maybe, just maybe, if we can come to that place, we realize that there are all paths leading up the same mountain to the exact same destination. So I do invite you. It takes a lot to go to Sundance, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. It also takes a lot to get there because we take with us tobacco and cloth, cedar and sage. We take prayers. It's gas. It takes about two days to get there and two days to return home. Also food. For camp, we need to bring food for all the people. This is on the reservation. And our people on the reservation, they don't have what we think is small, is a lot. And so a large bag of rice, a large bag of quinoa, vegetables, all of this we collect and we gather and we take. Most we take is non-perishable and we buy what's perishable when we get there. Because if not, it'll go bad. So it takes the whole community. Sundance is a community of people. The supporters come and they help. The dancers dance and they pray. The fire keepers keep fire. The children play and remind us to be in touch with that little child that is inside of us. That we don't have to get too serious to laugh at ourselves, to remember to dance, to remember to sing, to remember that we yearn for one another. In this day, with what we face, we've lost some of our human connection with one another. Sundance reminds us we are all connected, we are all one, and we need one another. We yearn for one another. We yearn for conversation. We yearn for a hug. We yearn for touch. Let us remember to be kind. Let us remember that everybody's giveaway is a little different. Not everybody is called to Sundance. Some people only come to support and help. Others support from here. And the way that you can do this is to eat and drink for us. When you think about gentle rain, and you drink your water, think about her. And believe it or not, she'll feel that. Last year, I I danced four days on a broken ankle. I broke it the night before. I didn't know it was broken. I just knew it hurt really bad. All of my supporters, I got up the next morning, I couldn't walk. This isn't a commitment that we walk away from. And I I couldn't walk. And one of the supporters ran over to the camp, and they said, Mama's in trouble. We need you. And they came out and they stood around the arbor and they danced. I danced for all four days because they were sending their energy to me. So please know it's important. When you think of us, send us some of that. Sundance Tree Day is on June 17th and then we dance the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st. And Sundance doesn't just last four days. It's four days of purification before, four days of dance, and four days of integration. So it equals 12 days. So if you just think about us, when you eat and when you drink, 
send it to us. You'll be with us. And maybe, just maybe, you'll feel us. I want to thank you from my heart to yours for being here today, for having this connection. My name is Utoncha Chikala, and my grandmother was, I called her bare feet, everybody called her bare feet, and not bare, not bare feet like bare claws, but bare feet. Not bare feet as in bare feet, but bare claws. She, she went by her name Ruby, was what English would call her. And so, whether you're Muscogee, Shalagee, whether you're Native American or American Indian, whether you're Caucasian or you're Asian, whether you're Hispanic, whether you're black, white, yellow, or red, I want to say, Padamaye Yado. That means that you have given me great reason to be grateful. Aho Matakoyasin. Am I on? Okay. Thank you, Mom Bear. Our mission at Emerson is to seek truths, celebrate differences, act on our unitarian universalist principles, inspire the best in each other, in each of us, and serve the world. Our mission is made possible through the generous time, talent, and financial contributions of members, friends, and guests. One way we live our mission is by partnering with other organizations committed to creating justice, peace, compassion in the world. Each month we choose an organization and encourage our members and friends to contribute both financially and through their work. This month's partner is Must Ministries, Must Summer Lunch Program, which is going on now, uh, some means many of our neighbors are wondering how they will feed their children lunch each day. Must provides nutritious lunch each summer weekend, weekday, to thousands of children. At this time, we ask that you consider making a financial contribution to Must Ministry Summer Lunch Program. Our collection today will be shared equally between uh, both organizations. Any amount is appreciated, and we will thank you for putting your values into actions. Ways of giving will be listed on the screen uh, for those who are online. Uh, a link will be on the online chat, and you can also go to our website at emersonuu.org. You will be directed to our online giving platform where you can contribute to the Share the Basket. You will also have the option of... Uh, an additional contribution to ask for if you choose. And for those here, uh, we have the uh, baskets if you wish to use them. Uh, they're throughout. We got two here and one in the alley, or the just before you leave the doors. And now the offering will be received. <laughs> Closing words today are from Totem by Rush. I have 12 disciples and a Buddha smile. Garden of Allah, Viking Valhalla, a miracle once in a while. I have a pantheon of animals and a pagan soul. Vishnu and Gaia, 
Aztec and Maya dance around my totem pole. I believe in what I see. I believe in what I hear. I believe that what I'm feeling changes how the world appears. Aho. And for our child's extinguishing. As we extinguish the child's, I ask that you join with me in our final response written in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the truth, light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world until we are together again. The service is over. May the service begin and have a good day. And Millie would like to uh, escort the rose out the door, if you don't mind. Thank you. Did I not? I hear you. Yeah. Nice. I'll go down the trees. <laughs>